spot where the pond drains into the river. And this is the trail back to the trailhead, which is at the end of a old manufacturing facility for coatings. And there are these stirring looking signs, no trespassing and such, but they don't seem to be enforced. And if you hug the outer edge of the driveway until you spot the trailhead, you're fine. They're probably puzzled as to what anyone would be here for, or it's something they're familiar with. Here it looks like we're crossing probably an old man-made dike to direct the floodwaters of the Shashin over on the opposite plain. Now there's some interesting little rasulas. Where are they? Yeah, there they are. Funny combination of colors. <laughs> There's probably few other destinations where you can go to one commuter rail stop and find such a astonishing cluster of land preserves in such a small area. Wow, these are an interesting color. Don't know what they are. There's a little one over here. It's a different shape. They don't really seem like Rasulas. This thing's pretty impressive too. And right now, it's mushroom time in the woods. Ah, and you pass through a bit of second growth pine and the margins of the river, a little bit upland, not much. And then we have yet another outstanding example of community involvement. This is a great boardwalk. I believe this one was also made last winter. These boardwalks are generally built in the winter when you can just cut through the ice and walk and get around and everything. I have a sneaking suspicion this is more handiwork from our friends in the Andover Trails Committee. And see it crosses a little inlet of the old pond. Once again, giving you a magical glimpse of wetland world. The wetlands are really the living systems of the land. Each watershed is its own discrete world. And because they've survived to some extent being unsuitable for speculative rapacity, they stand out as the circulatory system almost of these communities and they've buffered financial value in much the same way that the recharge aquifers in them buffer against the never-ending 
pile of toxic stuff we tend to dump around the land as we go about our monkey business. All around, it's a win-win deal. Increasingly, these visits will amount to excursions through wetlands, the anchors of it all. And here we find ourselves closing in on the parking lot, or actually the entranceway. Again, this is a more austere Andover Conservation Commission property. The Vale Reservation is privately owned and belongs to the aforementioned venerable Andover Village Improvement Society. So, the Conservation Commission has more modest signage in kiosks, but it's nonetheless serviceable should there be any need for it. Kind of minimalist. Post notices on it when needed. And this is our way out of here. We'll soon be in an old manufacturing business's parking lot. Shashin rubber coatings. See, it hasn't entirely been vanquished. People still make things. There it is. There's the Andover Conservation Commission rules, which are straightforward and charming. Let's see. You're permitted to use this property for recreation during daylight hours, overnights and evening picnics, group activities should be brought before the conservation office for consideration. And no booze, no hunting guns, firearm discharges, no trapping except as prior authorization occurs. Leave the damn trees alone. Don't harvest deadwood. Keep trash out of here. Don't dump stuff. No motorized vehicles except as authorized. Nor fires, campfires. And please, lose the paintball or war games. That's funny. The paintball or war games. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's unique. Where else would you find this as a problem? See, there you go. Paintball or, quote, war games. Jeez, you'd think grown-ups would grow up. Anyway. There you have it. The parking lot, lengthy industrial driveway, beckons. One sees the employees' cars off in the distance.